Good evening, everyone. Before we get started tonight with our levees presentation, we would like to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands and traditional territories of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people. We'd all, I would also like to let everyone know that we have interpreted meetings available in our top five languages. Links are noted in the chat. Thank you for taking your time to be here today and for your continued interest in our schools and the future of our students. We appreciate your willingness to engage in this important conversation about the future of Seattle Public Schools. Today is the first of three community levy information sessions. We're here to share details about our proposed levy renewals. Tonight, we'll start by discussing our current budget climate and then walk through the specifics of our two levy renewals, the Educational Programs and Operations Levy, EPNO levy sometimes referred to, and the Building Excellence Six Capital Levy Program, also sometimes referred to as BEC-6. If these levies are approved by our school board on November 19, they will appear on the February 11, 2025 ballot. At the end of the presentation, we'll be answering questions you have through the Q&A feature of Teams. We know the potential school closures are on the top of mind for many in our community. The district plans to make an announcement pertaining to that issue by the end of this week. While this presentation is focused on the levies, we are happy to answer any questions that pertain to our overall budget. <clears throat> in addition to the levies at the end of the presentation. Levies are local property taxes that are approved by voters to fund public schools. If these levies are approved, all of these funding supports Seattle schools and Seattle students. These levies are not new taxes. They are renewals of existing expiring levies. Here's an overview of the two levies we'll be talking about today. The Educational Programs and Operations, the EPNO levy uh, renewal helps cover essential day-to-day -day operations that the state doesn't fully fund, including staffing, special education, and student programs like athletics, drama, and art. The capital levy is our main source of funding for school safety improvements, technology, 
and critical building repairs, renovations, and new construction. Both levy renewals will go to the school board for approval on November 19th, and if passed, will appear on the February 11th, 2025 ballot. Now I'd like to turn, turn it over to Dr. Kurt Buttleman, our Assistant Superintendent of Finance, to provide an overview of the current budget climate. Kurt. Thank you, Richard. Uh, before we get into the specifics on these two levies we're discussing tonight, we wanted to provide some context for how the EPNO levy fits into the Seattle Public Schools larger budget conversations. So we have a series of slides related to that. As you may be aware, school districts are funded through a combination of state, local, and federal dollars. Of the $1.23 billion budget for Seattle Public Schools, the EPNO, or Operations Levy, that we are discussing tonight is the second largest type of funding. The state funds 63% of the total budget for Seattle Public Schools, while the Operations Levy funds 15.6% of this current year's budget. The intent of this levy funding is to continue funding for these enrichment activities while the state funds basic education. As many of you may be aware, Seattle Public Schools is currently projecting a budget deficit of $94 million for the 25-26 school year. This is a structural issue in that the needs of Seattle Public Schools students and families are exceeding the funding provided by the state. The situation is not unique to Seattle Public Schools, as many other districts across the state are struggling with these very same issues. As we are all well aware, the cost of living in Seattle continues to rise. Additionally, the needs of our communities continue to grow. Security services, special education services, multi-language services, substitute teacher costs are just examples of areas where state funding does not cover the needs of Seattle Public Schools students and families, and where this levy provides an ongoing funding source. We'll get into more details on some of those items later in this presentation. Over the last few years, Seattle Public Schools has begun addressing this structural deficit issue, and we continue to work with state legislatures and colleagues to, to work to bring more stability into the state's K-12 system. Listed on this slide are a few examples of things Seattle Public Schools has done to help with the structural issue. You'll see that school consolidations is just one of many strategies the district is employing to reduce costs. Additional solutions include the utilization of one-time strategies to mitigate or delay significant reductions that directly impact schools and students. As a point of reference, it should be noted that more than 78% of Seattle Public Schools spending occurs in teaching, teaching support, and school site administration. Or to put it more simply, 78% of the spending provides staffing and resources in our schools. The additional 22% is comprised of other support activities such as transportation, nutrition services, custodial maintenance, IT, and insurance. And a little more than 16%. Central administration is about 5.5% of the total budget. For folks interested in doing a deep dive into this financial information, the Seattle Public Schools budget book, all 205 pages of it, can be found on the seattleschools.org website, bannering budget book into the search box. Please be aware that the school board will continue its budget discussions in the coming months with formal adoption of a budget for the 25-26 school years currently scheduled for July. Let's transition to the main objective for this meeting tonight, which is to provide information related to the renewal of the EP&O levy and the next <coughs> six levies. Keep in mind that the levies being discussed tonight are both renewals of existing levies that will expire at the end of 2025. But I'll be happy to provide more detail on the EP&O levy now. The Educational Programs Operation Levy, or the EPO levy, is enrichment funding that helps continue funding for day-to-day -day educational programs and services that are not fully funded by the state. We have provided some examples of programs and services. Those are student safety and support, student services and programs, and student opportunities. I'm a parent of two kids who are graduates of Seattle Public Schools, and I can speak personally to how much value these programs and services have provided to my family and to our community. These are critical components to a child's education, which are supported by the EPNO levy. We often get questions about why Seattle Public Schools can't just raise more money from satellites to fix the deficit problem and provide additional opportunities for students. 
This slide is a summary of what restrictions school districts in Washington State have on levying local taxes. You can see there's a state law that limits the amount school districts may collect, and that amount has changed as a result of the McCleary decision, which has further restricted the amount school districts can raise locally. Although districts are limited to what we can collect from taxpayers by state law, Seattle Public Schools and many other districts do ask voters for an additional amount of capacity if that limit were to be increased by state law in the future. The information we are presenting tonight does build in some capacity should those laws be changed over the course of the next three years. I'd like to now provide a little more detail on a few of the items funded by the EPNO or operations levy. Security staff. The state's funding allocation model, some of you may know this as the prototypical model, only provides funding for district the size of Seattle Public Schools for approximately nine security specialists. Due to the needs of our communities, Seattle Public Schools has 73 security specialist positions. This difference of 63.7 security specialists is funded by this operations levy. And without the levies, Seattle Public Schools would need to reduce costs in other parts of the district to fund this need. Another example is special education. The state's funding allocation model, again the prototypical model, only provides approximately $150 million for special education services which the district is mandated to provide students who need them. Although there have been recent increases to this state funding in recent years, Seattle Public Stills is still funding approximately $74 million of this need from the EPNO levy. A final example is athletics. Seattle Public Schools spends approximately $5.5 million per year on athletics. This funding is fully coming from the EPNO or operations levy. Without the renewal of this levy, Seattle Public Schools would need to consider program reductions, fees per, for participation, or other reductions to other areas throughout Seattle Public Schools. What does this cost a typical taxpayer? The cost, <coughs> the rates that were presented to the school board in October would result in the continuation of the EPNO levy at slightly higher rates than currently being paid due in large part to inflation. The current rate is 63 cents per thousand dollars of assessed property value. This levy contemplates 70 cents per thousand dollars of assessed property value for the 2026 year. The rates go down from there due to the projected increase in assessed value. I'd like to turn it back to Richard to talk more about the BEX 6 capital levy renewal. Thank you, Dr. Buttleman. And again, I want to highlight that this is not a new levy, but this is just the renewal of our Bex levies. And I want to thank the Seattle voters who have supported Seattle Public Schools Bex levies since 1995 when, we, um, when the Bex 1 levy was approved. Um, our Bex levies are, are uh, generally focused on safety and security improvements heating and ventilation improvements, large replacements, renovations, or repairs to our existing schools, and then energy conservation. In addition, our BEX levies include funding for technology. With our BEX levies, we concentrate on major renovations and replacements, and this levy is no different. We are uh, recommending that the board approve five projects at this time. The addition of Lowell Elementary School, the addition and renovation of Lowell Elementary School. Lowell Elementary School uh, opened in, or uh, was designed, uh, and the addition um, in 1919 it was designed by Edgar Blair. And we're proposing to keep that portion of the building while replacing the remainder of the building. And the Northeast Elementary Schools, we are proposing to uh, um, make a decision about the Northeast Elementary Schools um, when the well-resourced schools recommendation has been made to the school board. We are also proposing an addition and modernization of Aki Kurosi Middle School. Aki Kurosi was opened in 1952 um, and is one of our most diverse schools within Seattle Public Schools. Chief Self International High School 
we are proposing a career and technical education and general classroom addition. The career and technical education uh, programs have experienced significant student uh, enrollment um, and spaces are overcrowded. In addition, we'd like to eliminate the portables that we have had on site at Chief Self High School uh, and make those general education classrooms. John Marshall School has been a district interim site since 2014 and has allowed us to make the improvements in our prior Bex levies at our North End schools. We've housed 10 schools there as an interim site and knowing that the city of Seattle is passing legislation regarding unreinforced masonry buildings, we'd like to make seismic improvements and HVAC improvements at this school. In addition, BEC 6 is going to focus on safety, security, and life safety improvements. We have several safety measures being proposed, including secure entry vestibules. So when you arrive at a school, you'll come through the main entryway into the office before you get access to the entire school. That has been a standard at our BEX 4 and BEX 5 projects, and we've implemented 10 other school uh, uh, secure entry vestibules at 10 other schools as well. We're continuing those improvements with our BEX 6 capital levy. In addition, we're going to be looking at perimeter fencing around portions of our site and um, it, uh, the replacement of intercom systems at a majority of our schools. With the replacement of the intercom systems, it will allow the district to contact all 106 schools in the event of an emergency at one time. Security system upgrades are being planned that they include uh, security cameras, uh, door uh, and window intrusion alarms, AI phones at the front entry to our schools, amongst other items. In addition, we have fire alarm uh, improvements planned at many of our existing schools. Obviously, fire alarm systems address uh, smoke um, and are a life safety system that we want to in, uh, uh, keep current throughout our school inventory. With upgrades to the City of Seattle's URM code, we will be making seismic improvements at several schools as well in response to those um, code regulation requirements. And then the Americans with Disabilities Act, we are looking at making improvements um, to our existing inventory to comply with those regulations of which elevator repairs are a part. Lastly, I'd note that we are replacing the defibrillators at all 106 schools. In addition to the safety and security measures, we're also implementing improvements similar to what homeowners would implement. Knowing that homeowners have to replace their roofs on occasion, have to paint their houses on occasion, we too at Seattle Public Schools have to replace our roofs and apply either paint or water repellent anti-graffiti coatings to our masonry uh, structures. That's a part of the BEC-6 capital levy. In addition, the COVID pandemic highlighted how important heating, ventilation, and air conditioning improvements are. And so we are proposing the BEC-6 capital levy, what we commonly refer to in the design and construction industry as HVAC improvements. We'll be making student restrooms uh, improvements at some of our schools, uh, some of our secondary schools as part of the BEC-6 capital levy. We'll be implementing lighting upgrades, implementing major preventative maintenance projects. And then an accomplishment I'm really proud of is that we now implement uh, playground safety inspections on an annual basis and since our BEX-5 capital levy have funded um, the renewals of playgrounds. Play is an important part of our educational program, and we want to make sure that those environments are safe for our students. In addition, Seattle Public Schools has had a longstanding athletic field replacement program. We're continuing to provide um, uh, synthetic turf fields at our middle schools, and then 
consistent with a uh, programmatic environmental impact statement, we're providing field lighting at our element, uh, middle schools as well. Lastly, one of the major projects here in the district administration building is the implementation of central kitchen improvements. This will finish the central kitchen improvements of the John Stanford Center. And that central kitchen feeds 65 elementary schools and 10 K-8 schools. So, so significant for Seattle Public Schools. Other projects included are the Thornton Creek flood mitigation uh, plan, the interior build out of the Rainier Beach High School, and then some reoccurring items that are generally in every <coughs> BEX and BTA levy, including equipment for our maintenance grounds and food service personnel, building modifications to support our academic needs, specifically our special education and early learning programs, property acquisition and infrastructure, management of staffing, management and staffing of capital projects and planning department, and then construction escalation and future levy planning. How are the projects selected? Seattle Public Schools has utilized three outside independent consulting firms since 2014 in providing facilities condition assessments. And I highlight that we've used three different firms because it's important to get differing perspectives on the condition of your facilities. Ming Analysis implemented a, a, an assessment in 2014. So, uh, McKinstry implemented an assessment in 2018. And in 2022, we hired Cezanne to implement that assessment. This has really informed our BEX 6 capital levy. With that, we took that information and developed cost estimates for roofing systems that needed to be replaced, for buildings that were in poor condition and systems had reached the end of their useful life. And then we followed the board's guiding principles and board policy to really prioritize which projects would move forward to the public for approval on, in February. And we wanted to want to let you know that we used uh, an equity lens for the selection of the projects that we're recommending to the board. In addition, we reviewed these this, this levy package with both our BEX BTA Capital Levy Oversight Committee, a public committee comprised of 11 community members and the Information Technology and Advisory Committee. That really is a group that helped us in the in the development of our capital levies to, to go to the school board. And with that, I'd like to turn to my colleague, Carlos de Valle, to talk about the BEC-6 technology funding. Thank you, Richard. Uh, let me speak a little bit about technology funding. Um, our capital levy um, funds about 90% of the technology budget. Uh, this translates about 120 FTEs, uh, the upkeep of the infrastructure, networks, a data center, pretty much how we keep the lights uh, on for tech at uh, the district. Uh, it includes uh, student and staff computer devices, uh, how do we do tech refresh, how do we buy new, new systems, uh, classroom technology, audio visual uh, on the classroom, software and hardware, both for the business operations and the academic systems, uh, developing and implementation of digital curriculum adoption, upgrades to existing digital systems and upgrades to cybersecurity systems. Uh, that includes uh, monitoring systems for our network. Uh, it includes cameras, uh, security cameras in our schools, and et cetera. And uh, equity access to uh, digital resources and language support systems. What does that translate to? That translates to $450 million over a uh, three-year um, period. Uh, we did a comprehensive analysis, how Richard explained, and, and requirements. Um, with the help of uh, different departments, functional departments, and uh, the ITAC uh, committee. Uh, we fund three major areas, the student learning support, the infrastructure and security, and the district systems and data. 
From the uh, student uh, learning and support, this portion of the levy covers for technical support staff to provide for repairs and logistics of equipment at schools. Also, these funds provide for the digital learning support, uh, purchasing of instructional software licenses, procurement of students' laptops, and associated staff that provide for these services. Uh, under infrastructure and security, this portion of the levy provides uh, for the operational cost of running the data center, the backbone infrastructure. It provides also for cybersecurity monitoring systems, server software licenses, operations and equipment, hardware and maintenance. It also pays for internet connectivity uh, and our telephone uh, service, and also for the associated staff to support all these systems. Finally, our district systems and data uh, this portion of the levy covers for software systems, developers, and analysts, and the feeding care of our business and financial systems, uh, such as the uh, enterprise resource uh, planning, um, our SAP, uh, HR systems, our learning management system is uh, the Schoology CSAG, uh, and student information systems uh, such as Atlas Database, the Microsoft uh, Teams for Education, Power Schools. It includes hardware and software. Uh, application licenses, consultants, vendors, contracts, and uh, associated staff that supports uh, all this line of uh, efforts. So, altogether, uh, it comes out to be for the capital levy about $1.8 billion uh, over a period of six years at a uh, rate ranges between the 79 and 93 cents per dozen of assessed proper value uh, over six years. With that, I'm gonna pass it back to Dr. Bottomon. Uh, he's gonna take us through the uh, levy rates. I can provide a little more context and how the levy rates being proposed tonight and the levy rates currently assessed compared to other districts in the region. You'll see on this slide, Seattle Public Schools um, community is currently paying about $1.85 per $1,000 of assessed value. That includes the ep &O levy that's in existence now, the BEX-5 levy, and the BTA levy um, that Carlos discussed previously. Um, for comparison purposes, if the levies as currently proposed for the coming years were approved by voters, the voters would pay approximately $2.04 per $1,000 of assessed value. Again, this is primarily due to inflationary costs related to the capital projects and the cost of living, cost of operating a school district in Seattle. I think we're back to you, Richard. For... Thank you again for your attention. We are going to use the question and answer function of teams for your, for your questions. We have a team of people standing by to review your questions and pass them on. We are not going to answer any questions about anything other than the levies or the budget. As a reminder, we expect to make an announcement about school, school closures by the end of the week, so we won't be answering those questions. We are collecting and reviewing your comments, even though we won't be reading them here. We will end at 7.30 tonight. We'll try to get through as many questions as possible. We're adding a frequently asked question or a fact component to our website. And then Let's Talk link is also available on the website. So go to the first question. Um, thank you also to everyone who's attending tonight. Just a reminder, we will post the presentation on our website later this week. Um, the first question is, what projects were done with the last BEX levy money? The last BEX 5 capital levy completed an addition at West Woodland Elementary School in 2021, an addition at the James Madison Middle School in 2022, um, replacement of Northgate, Kimball, and Viewlands Elementary Schools, that which opened in 2023, and then an addition at West Seattle Elementary School, which also opened in 2023. Lincoln High School, we renovated the um, east side buildings um, and uh, opened those. We made seismic improvements and envelope improvements plus we renovated the career and technical education classrooms at Lincoln High School 
and the Performing Arts Center. And then in 2025, we will be opening new schools at John Rogers, Asa Mercer, and Rainier Beach High School. In addition, um, we will be, uh, we completed a modernization of the landmarked building at Montlake Elementary School and a classroom and gymnasium addition at Montlake. And then 2026, we will really complete the major project at Alki Elementary School. And those were the major projects that were proposed in the Bex 5 capital levy. We also had as part of the Bex 5 capital levy design monies set aside for Sacagawea Elementary School and Aki Kurosi uh, Middle School. We have suspended the efforts at Sacagawea Elementary School. Um, at this moment in time, we've spent a little under $400,000 on that project and kept that money fenced until the board makes a decision uh, about surrounding uh, well-resourced schools and school consolidation. Thank you. If schools are slated for closures are included in the current levy proposal, will funds be reallocated to capital projects at other schools? Uh, if, yes, the, if schools are included in the BEC 6 capital levy and the board determines to close those schools, those funds will, will remain fenced. There may be some things that we absolutely need to do at those schools, like replace a roof to protect the investment we made at that school so there's not consequential damages from rainwater entering the building, but those, those dollars will remain fenced as as initially um, allocated in the BEC 6 capital levy and further conversations with the school board and the BEC's BTA oversight committee would determine how to utilize those dollars um, at a future date. How will funding from the BEC's levy enhance technology at my child's school? So um, we have a <clears throat> Big investments going on uh, this time around. Uh, one of them is just, just covering for the tech refresh of the equipment that we have purchased over the past years. Uh, that we want to maintain and have uh, the kids have the, the best technology they have. I know we're doing a lot of our grades also on the classroom. We're changing um, audio piece or equipment. Uh, we're putting a big investment in that area and also cameras uh, for safety at schools. One of the, the, the big investments that, that we are leaning uh, from the academic side, it is the uh, planning and uh, implementation of additional digital curriculum adoption, uh, which can enhance the, uh, um, the learning in the classroom, as well as uh, some AI resources that we're providing for both the students and the educators uh, to streamline some of that, that work at school. Thank you. Why don't you just increase the levies to cover the deficit and fully fund our schools? That's a good question. The state law doesn't allow that at this time. Um, there's restrictions on how much school districts can raise locally, and Seattle Public Schools is up against that, that maximum amount at this point. And, and we do include some additional capacity in levy requests to the voters in the off chance or the if the legislature does allow for more levy capacity in the future. So. Um, that is a great question. We get that a lot, but the current law restricts what we can raise from the, the local levies. And it's not unique to Seattle Public Schools. This is the case at all school districts across the state of Washington. Why does the number of, the number of projects has steadily dropped for BECs? Why? Costs, uh, costs have increased, um, you, know, you know, I would say inflation has been running at 8% in the uh since the COVID pandemic um uh and has had a significant impact on our school co uh, construction costs uh also in the bec 6 capital levy we are addressing some uh safety concerns as noted um, we are uh, spending you know approximately 100 million dollars on safety and security in the bec 6 capital levy 
In addition, we are responding to regulation changes um, from both the state of Washington and the city of Seattle regarding energy conservation and building emissions. So those uh, expenditures are significantly increasing so that we can meet um, those requirements. Failure to meet the state of Washington and city of Seattle requirements does have a financial penalty. Um, and so we want to be proactive and address those so that we're not paying that financial penalty um, from our general fund. Lastly, I would note the city of Seattle is contemplating the unreinforced masonry act that is anticipated to go before the um, city council in 2025. Um, so we are addressing that as well um, with our seismic improvements and um, the major improvements planned at the John Marshall School. So again, want to highlight the significance of the work of the past levies. We recognize that um, our request for school um, projects and this levy is smaller, but we are also going to be touching with this Bex levy far more schools than previous Bex levies have touched with the safety security improvements and some uh, the energy conservation improvements. And then at some schools where they have a URM structure, seismic upgrades. Why should we pass these levies if we don't even know which schools might close? So I would just highlight that uh, our Bex levies, again, the improvements are needed. Uh, much like your home ages um, and needs to have a roof replaced, needs to be painted, that is the function of time and we need to maintain our schools for our students. Um, Obviously, with school uh, pending school closures, we're going to have to engage in a conversation with our school board and a conversation with our public about what will the uses be at these schools uh, should they be closed. Just because they're closed does not mean that they will not be used for some purpose by Seattle Public Schools. And we need to, as I highlighted earlier, repair roofs so we don't have to make greater investments in the future. We need to keep the rainwater out of the house because once that gets into the house, you're going to be repairing gypsum wallboard, <laughs> you're going to be repairing um, architectural finishes and potentially uh, mechanical and electrical systems. So we need to continue to make an investment in our schools. I can add a little bit on the EP and L or operations levy to the question or an answer to the question around that will have the same number of students, regardless of the, same, of the number of buildings that are operated. So the resources that are in this levy will just be renewed and uh, want to continue those operations and those sports enrichment sports for students through the EPNL levy. So despite you know, potential school closures, the operations supported by this need to continue for those students and families. Thank you. Why more money for the R Rainier Beach High School project? The Rainier Beach High School project in the last uh, three years has experienced, you know, significant construction escalation. I think we've really delivered on the promise. When we opened the base bids uh, for that, a bid alternate was to build out the Performing Arts Center. We determined not to build out the Performing Arts Center at that time because we didn't have a revenue source to do that. Um, we are going back before the voters to ask them to build out and complete the Rainier Beach High School uh, interior build out of the Performing Arts Center. The other projects that were contemplated at Rainier Beach High School were never planned to be part of the original project. And that is the practice field, making the practice field at Rainier Beach High School synthetic turf and placing field lights at that location as well. That was never contemplated to be part of the Rainier Beach High School project. And it was something that has arisen through community requests. And then we'll also highlight that fields is a, field use is a significant broad community issue within the city of Seattle. This provides additional space for community groups to use fields after um, in, in accordance with our joint use agreement.
how, excuse me, how do I advocate for my child's school to be included, included in planning for the next levy? Um, those conversations uh, will occur in public settings and in, uh, we reach out to the community to help inform us on both our BECs and BTA levies. And so would just encourage you to, to um, continue to reach out to Capital Projects and Planning, to myself, Becky Asensio, our K-12 planning manager, who helps assemble the levies um, to create awareness about um, that child, that uh, child school. And I will remind you that we do have the Let's Talk function on our website, and you can reach us through the levies page, Let's Talk, or through the Capital Projects Let's Talk on the construction page. Um, will the building condition assessment be updated to account for projects completed after 2022? When will that happen and when will those updates be taken into account when making decisions about levy spending? So we generally update the building condition assessment every four to six years. OSPI requires that it be updated every six years uh, and um, we generally up, have been on a pattern of updating it every four years to help it, to have that document help inform the facility needs of uh, Seattle Public Schools. Um, I don't know when the um, plan is to update the facilities condition assessment next, but I'm gonna guess it's in the 2026 to 2028 timeframe. There was money to purchase land in the levy proposal. What land would you need to buy? You have land already that you aren't using. So I will give you an example from the Bex 5 capital levy um, because I don't know which properties the, uh, the monies allocated in Bex 6 will uh, purchase at this time, but we also included funding in the Bex 5 capital levy for property. Um, with that, with the demolition of Memorial Stadium, we were able to purchase a warehouse um, to locate the contents that are underneath the South Bleacher Stands. Uh, the, when the South, uh, when Memorial Stadium is demolished, that surplus warehouse that we have used for a period of 75 years will go away. We had a need that we didn't foresee at the time of putting that, le uh, that project together and we were able to meet that need with the property assessment dollars. We keep those dollars or property Dollars. We keep those dollars fenced for the designated purpose. And again, I can't articulate what that money will be spent for in the BEC 6 capital levy, but I do know over the period of six years, needs arise that we do need some funding for um, property acquisition. What about securing closed buildings? Last time, Viewlands had their copper stripped out. Can you repeat the question, please? What will you do to secure closed buildings? Last time when Viewlands was closed, that somebody stripped out the copper from inside the building. Definitely need to have security measures implemented at closed buildings. We're well aware of that issue. What that exactly looks like at this time, we don't know because the schools haven't been announced that will be closed, but we are very aware of the security issues uh, surrounding closed schools and we'll have to put a plan in place. We're not seeing any other questions coming in. Can I ask a question? <laughs> you said something about the Bex and BTA Oversight Committee. Can you say a little more about what that is? Sure. Um, the Bex and BTA Oversight Committee is a public committee 
that is, was formed in 1995 to hold Seattle Public Schools um, Capital Projects and Planning Department accountable for delivering on the promise. Um, and we literally meet with 11 community members and uh, two board members on a monthly basis to review um, the status of the implementation of our BECs and BTA levies. And uh, we highlight you know, design issues, construction issues, spend a lot of time on finances, uh, especially at this time because of the closing of the books. The meeting in January uh, is focused solely on year-end closeout for fiscal year 23-24 but they are a public oversight committee that really holds Seattle Public Schools accountable for delivering on the commitments we made to the voters in our capital levies. And similarly, our technology department has what they call the ITAC committee, the Information Technology Advisory Committee. I'll let Carlos de Valle speak on that. Yeah, similar to their committee, um, our committee is a year round uh, composed of uh, nine members of staff, uh, nine members of uh, families and community, uh, industry, and we have uh, three students that are part of the committee. Um, among other things, you know, the levy, when we bring the investments in, uh, in the implementation, the master implementation plan, they, they get to review the investments uh, uh, and weigh in on it, um, and, and they give us feedback on, on the best way that, that we can implement these systems. Uh, usually we, we meet monthly, um, uh, we meet monthly, and um, the group of people, this group of people get us to understand um, what is the best solutions that we can bring for the, for the uh, community. We, we get to see the, the equity piece of uh, any solutions that we bring. Um, in essence, it's the committee that, 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 that brings transparency to the community of any uh, 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 projects that we have uh, uh, for implementation. Um, and how to say it, they're the ones that advise us in any uh, uh, solutions that we bring forward into the BECs. Where is the funding for Memorial Stadium project coming from? Uh, Memorial Stadium was funded out of the BTA 5 capital levy that was passed by the voters in 2022. We began work on that levy uh, or on that project in 2023. That's because when levies are passed, you're not able to capture the funding until the following calendar year. And so we began work on that project in 2023 we will begin construction hopefully in July of 2025 and hopefully open a new uh, Memorial Stadium facility in um, the spring of 2027. Can members of the public still join the BEX and BTA Oversight Committee? The, app, the website says the applications were closed on October 5th. And also the same question about ITAC, how do you join both of those committees? So BECS BTA Oversight Committee make the meetings are held the second Friday of every month uh, from 8.30 to 10.30 here at the John Stanford Center. They are a public meeting. Um, to become a member, we go out uh, for membership. When the current members expire, we ask that folks um, apply, um, and then we review the applications, um, and a decision is made, um, and generally it's the BECS committee chair and vice chair and um, school board members that review the application. It is not um, Seattle public uh, member uh, staff. Um, but they have terms in accordance with their charter. They are four-year terms and they um, are seeking new membership every two years uh, unless a member resign, uh, uh, resigns uh, prior to the um, uh, end of their term. Similar to the uh, um, 
that committee, we, we do put an application out around uh, July. We ask members, new members to apply. Uh, we, we, we pretty much send information out uh, through social media, uh, all the means, that, uh, letters, newsletters. Um, please apply <laughs> when these things uh, 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 come online. Um, the term is, two, is one year with uh, uh, members can volunteer for two. Uh, after two years, they will have to reapply or um, uh, also the, we, 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 we meet monthly uh, on the third uh, month, uh, on the third Monday every month. Um, I don't know, what else can I say? We can add that to the FAQ also. I can, I can provide more information on the process in, uh, uh, that we followed. Okay. I think we don't have, oh, we have another question. Can you repeat the name of the SPS K-12 capital project contact you referenced? Was it Becky Atencio? No, it was Becky Asensio. And if you go to the Capital Projects and Planning webpage, the uh, contact information is there. You can find that by searching departments for capital planning, for capital projects and planning. Okay, so um, I think since we don't really have any other questions unless you guys want to have other questions that you think we should share with each other, which worked fine. I think that was great, Kurt. Thank you. Um, I have one last question, and that's what kind of technology does the levy fund at elementary schools? At elementary schools, uh, it all depends. Uh, you know, we, we, we look for requirements for uh, at each grade level. Uh, they might be different, you know, from, from one to another. Um, and, and we play solutions based on those requirements. Um, for instance, you know, we have uh, an elementary for K through eight, you know, the, the investments on um, uh, a lot of them on the reading side of the house. We're trying to implement new uh, digital resources on the iPads for uh, uh, K through three. Um, it's been, you know, very successful. There's more to, 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 to go in the future. And um, where we're looking, you know, for um, uh, uh, digital curriculum adoption as well, uh, there's something that will be coming uh, in the next levy as well. So, and I'd just like to add on to that question a little bit from a capital project standpoint. We work very closely with Carlos de Valle and his team to make sure that we provide the necessary building infrastructure for the technology that goes into our schools. Um, we have in the elementary schools, we provide interactive projectors on the teaching wall. Uh, we also provide uh, monitors in, in large spaces outside the classroom and in small group rooms outside the classroom that teachers can utilize, that students can utilize. Um, and in, in addition, I will note as part of the BEX 6 capital levy, we are going through a replacement of the audio visual equipment um, in all 106 schools. Um, I will highlight that uh, much of this technology that we are currently using is um, for interactive projectors and projectors is older than 10 years. So we're refreshing our infrastructure so that it remains um, relevant for both our staff and our students um, as part and all of the, well, a, a majority of this funding is coming from the BEC 6 capital levy. Thank you. I actually do have one more question to follow up with. Um, this person says, I just learned that there is a federal program for school districts to receive major tax credits for capital projects or investments that are related to clean energy. Is SPS planning to take advantage of this program? If they are eligible to receive these credits for some projects, does it expand the pool of levy funds available? So I'll take that question. <laughs> um, 
Uh, yes, I'm very aware of the Inflation Reduction Act and the tax credits. And for a public entity, it's called elective pay dollars that are available um, for um, infrastructure uh, projects to reduce our energy use and then also reduce our emissions. There's really five buckets of funding in the Inflation Reduction Act. They are for geothermal wells, for solar panels, for electron storage or uh, electrical storage, battery backup for, e e uh, for EV charging stations, and then for fleet conversion. And Seattle Public Schools um, has pursued the, uh, that funding um, at all of our BECS five schools. Um, we are currently uh, submitting um, documents to the Internal Revenue Service, hopefully by November 1 for James Baldwin Elementary School, Kimball Elementary School, and Viewlands Elementary School. We anticipate receiving um, $2.5 million, um, roughly $2.5 million for each of those three schools. Uh, in addition, I was apprised today that we will be getting a low income bonus for the solar panels that we'll be um, installing at Rainier Beach High School. All of our BEX funding, uh, our BEX 5 projects, we are going after that funding where we have installed uh, geothermal wells and where we have installed solar panels. So just take a moment to highlight, I was actually invited to the White House to speak on that topic um, to the school districts in the nation. So happy for that question. <clears throat> was that a relative of yours asking that question? <laughs> <laughs> Before we wrap up, I want to make sure that I thank the interpreters. They are um, they are running separate meetings with the um, with the people who needed interpretation for this meeting tonight, and I greatly appreciate their help. Um, we're looking into other options for future meetings. We're not quite sure. Um, we have one more question here. How come other regional districts don't pay as much to renovate buildings? Seattle Public Schools is fortunate to have such a large commercial real estate base that offsets some of the cost to the residents of Seattle. So the downtown buildings are paying their fair share of the, the, the tax on the levy. Actually, the question was, how come we pay more than other districts when we're building schools? How can we pay more? Oh. How come our buildings cost more uh, than other okay. districts? Well, so I just I answered a different question. <laughs> I, would, I would like to highlight that you know um, a couple of the things that we do at Seattle Public Schools that are probably different than most. Um, we take a very strong interest in um, the academic program and making sure that our buildings are responding to the academic program. But then also, I'm going to say in our uh, playground improvements, our building improvements to make sure that we are have a low um, energy uh, conservation or a low energy use index, and then um, would highlight that you know those are those are costs that add that we think long term we operationally benefit from um, because the investments we're making initially are reducing the impact to the general fund. Um, and that's um, kind of the strategies uh, that we've employed. Also, we're looking at durable materials. One of the materials that we utilize is, is masonry. A lot of school districts don't use masonry, but our maintenance department has a team of individuals who are well-trained on, on addressing maintenance, uh, masonry buildings and help, again, it's helping to reduce uh, long-term operational costs of our facilities spending a little bit more upfront to reduce that um, life cycle cost um, is very significant. I'll give you a wonderful example with our roofing systems. Our roofing systems are projected to last 30 years and in lieu of replacing that roofing system, if we come back and code it literally at one tenth of the cost of a replacement, we can extend the life of that roofing system for 20 more years and if we code it again at 50 years, we can extend it for 20 
further years. So it, this is a complex question, but the investments we're able to make now, we're looking on a long-term perspective, knowing that we're going to retain these assets for 75 to 100 years. And so we're looking at the life cycle costs in lieu of the first costs. Okay. Um, you were talking about getting credits for the energy projects. What happens to those funds when you get credited for them? Does it get reallocated? Does it get put into the capital fund? Where does it go? Those, those funds will be reallocated um, for uh, inter further energy conservation improvements. We'll be looking at our BECS BTA Oversight Committee to provide some guidance as to how those funds will be spent. We'll be looking for our school board to approve how those funds will be spent. But they are, um, they're, they're overseen by the BECS BTA Oversight Committee and any expenditure of those funds has to be approved by our school board. It's not determined, uh, capital projects might make a recommendation, but we have processes in place to determine how those funds are spent. Okay, we're almost out of time, so I'm gonna ask one final question. How can people help lobby or advocate for school district funding in Olympia to help deal with the lack of funding or the not, not enough funding for school districts? I think you tell your personal stories to your local legislators and let them know the impact on your family and your community. And just let them know that you believe public education is important for your community and they would like you, we'd like them to continue to support it fully. Thank you all. So Tina, I'm gonna to close tonight. And just, uh, I wanna thank those folks who are online who spent some time with us uh, learning about um, our BEC-6 capital levy, our EPNO levy. I also want to acknowledge the support that we've gotten from the citizens of Seattle since 1995 with our BECs, BTA, and EPNO levies. Um, that's not something that Seattle Public Schools takes for granted. We know that we have to earn that trust and we have to maintain that trust. But those dollars make a difference. And so I want to um, just thank the citizens of Seattle for their support. Um, we have two additional community uh, information sessions um, concerning the levy that will be um, on October 30th and November 7th. In addition, our school board will be making a decision about the levies at their November 19th meeting. We'd encourage you to um, reach out in our let's, let's talk function if you have ideas about the Bex levy um, the technology portion of the BECS levy or the EPNO levy. Um, we'll continue to uh, host informational meetings about the levies with PTAs. Um, and if you need additional information, go to our www.seattleschools.org backslash levies website. Um, again, just want to say thank you.